Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. think it's not the color i think it's the words that people are responding to of your hoodie yeah okay like i i wore this hoodie in today so we could talk about this because i got cat called in wearing this hoodie around west hollywood the other day walking archie moo four times four times four times two I had, walks yep two uh-huh. Uh, on the first walk, just random, like, woo, woo, hey, girl. And I was like, what's, the, I'm wearing a, like, a morning hoodie just out with, you know, with picking up Archie's poop. What, what's going on? And then didn't change. Later on, had two separate guy on a bike and a just random walk by, love your hoodie. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Is it the color? Is it, do people like Big Bear? Do they like the placement of Big Bear and the fact that it's right on my boobs and they can talk about that? So I just wanted to. What if you're a fox? Well, oh, wow. Thanks, Mike. What if people think you're a fox? I, I, I would love to think that that is why people were wee- wooing me. Um, I'll take it. Yeah? Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> I feel like anybody who's catcalling you, unless they're driving by and they're like, love the font. Right. <laughs> then, <laughs> well, I did. then it's very specifically about the hoodie instead of you. Well, I think, well, I think it is actually about the hoodie because oh. when we walked into the studio today, both producer Mark... <coughs> And our friend Robert turned and they were like, Jesus, that hoodie. So, <coughs> excuse me. It is very high visibility. Let it, for anyone who's just listening, it is a construction, work, construction worker orange. Um, and it has Big Bear um, like right across my hooters on it. So, I don't know. I get attention in it and I'm excited about it because it's That's awesome. January, which is, um, excuse my phone Is that going a off. cat call? Somebody's texting you about That's it? That's my trainer texting me right now, <laughs> holding me accountable. Oh, What's nice. up, Aris? Shout out. I, you know, January. So today we're recording this the third Monday in January. It's also Martin Luther King Day. And I just read online that it is also, um, some people call it Mental Health Monday because it is, because it is traditionally um, one of the saddest days of the year. It's one, you know, the sort of like post-holiday blues Everybody's staring down the barrel of a brand new year, wondering what the fuck is going to happen. There's a lot of stuff going on. I know for me, I'm definitely feeling some um, steeped in some January stuff. Oh, and so putting on this pop of color and walking around my neighborhood the other day and getting some like, you know, not even cat calls, just compliments from strangers, which yeah. I guess also could be considered cat calls. I I wasn't against it in the way that I normally I think would be like, don't yell at me, random man. I was like, oh no, people are responding to a bright color that maybe makes them feel good. Yeah, that's my take. I think that they should be canceled. <laughs> I want video of them, and I want you to put it online so that we can attack them and yell at them for. <laughs> Yell for complimenting you as strangers. Cancel them. I well, think they should be canceled. It's a it's a sticky wicket. Do you want some of this? This is what it. is it? It's the uh, Highway Cannabis. Um, and I'll talk about Highway Cannabis. They just opened, and I went to the grand opening of Highway Cannabis, and this is their uh, sativa pre roll, which I think is chem fruit. Okay, I'll try it. That's tasty. Um, it's a it's a it's a sticky wicket, and maybe like a a more thorny issue than just Highway Cannabis. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Great. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Thanks. Highway cannabis. Not an ad. Not an ad. Well, that's um, good weed. Yes, yeah, nice. So it's a sticky wicket. It's a sticky wicket because catcalling is uh, super f- fucking problematic and terrible and uh, concerning sometimes. Like if you're a woman walking down the street getting shouted at by a random man is actually a fucking awful experience. And I've had that in my life where it's scary and upsetting. Can I stop you right there with that? Yes. Uh, is it the context and what they are saying to you or is it the type of person and that's not your steez? Like what... What about it is uncomfortable? Because to me, as a dude, right. I'm like, if if I like, if I see some like hot babe, and I want to tell her that she's a hot babe, in my head, I'm like, oh, maybe that'll make her day and it'll make her feel good. But also, it makes women? me feel good. Um, no, like at a bar or something, if I was hitting on somebody, I'd be like, damn girl, what's up with you? Like, you know what I mean? But no, I would no, never no, no. like. I'm drive... talking about. Do you shout at women who you don't know in the street? Um, I have in college, yeah, right, for sure. So that I don't think. Uh, and like... I was in this. I was in a bus, right? And there's a uh, two cameras set up in okay. the back of the bus, great, and like a long seat covered in plastic wrap, okay. and I would have like a wad of bills, and we would just drive the bus all over campus. I can hear Mark laughing. I don't know what you're talking about. What oh, you never saw Bang to? Bus? No. Oh, 
It's a. It was and like, also, I'm prepared to get really fucking pissed off right now because that's the fucking problem, right? right. Like, I'm talking right. about putting a pop of color on my body and have strangers compliment me on it and that'd be really nice. And then you're distilling it down to what the actual fucking problem is with cat call culture, oh, I love which this. is fucking gross dudes fucking screaming at women and totally objectifying them sexually and making them feel afraid. Yeah. So fuck that. I don't know what bang bus is. I'm sure that I would hate it and scream about it if I knew more. Probably would. Um, just the thing you, you just said, like yeah. I'm, I hate it. So that's where it's thorny, right? It's like, oh, it's nice to be complimented by a stranger because my pop of color made them feel good versus a guy just saw a big bear on my boobs and thought he could talk to me because I had writing on my shirt, which is something that women learn pretty early on when you have a body that you don't want people to pay attention to. You don't wear logos or writing ever because then you don't, you don't give anyone Whoa. a chance to comment on what's on your body. That's such a bummer. It is a fucking bummer. So it was like, it was. I was just sort of enjoying this whole experience, but then I wanted to break it down with you too and be like, is it kind of problematic? Was it a weird thing that guys were, yeah, you know, and then you're like, you say one thing about, you know, driving around in a bang bus and I'm immediately incensed and also like thrown back in the fucking, you know, m my memories of, of being afraid mm. of men on the street talking about my body or walking into a store like a, I remember walking into a liquor store in New York um totally randomly one day and the guy like made me so uncomfortable that I had to leave with the clerk made me so uncomfortable that I had to leave without buying anything that sucks because of the way he was talking about my body so like you know and that's not even a bad as was... far as cat calling goes like women have experienced much worse you know right Okay, can, can I do counterpoints? <laughs> yes. Okay, because I don't want. Well, because I don't want to like. I don't want to. Uh, also, this, what's it I called? don't want this to be a bummer start to our fucking super fun app. You know, like I, uh, yeah. I'm having fun. Okay, good. So far, I've bombed one joke. <laughs> Wait, what was the joke you bombed? <laughs> bang bus. Oh, bang had bus. Had you known bang bus, I feel like we could have had a nice riff, but that's on me. Oh, that's on me, dude. I fucking whiffed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? <laughs> Great. Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy, cannabis, cooking, culture, calling shit out, and cat calling, and cat calling ish. Yeah, culture. So, okay, it's uh, it's counterpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, why why I, as a dude, my pushback is like, why can't I? Give a stranger a compliment that might make them feel good and make me right. like, and especially if I'm attracted to them. Um, I mean, you know, mating calls are mating calls. It, it, whether you're a a bird or a man, mm. you know, you you gotta pro your like the goal is to procreate and keep on the bloodline. So okay. it's like, so it's like if I was walking past you and mm -hmm. you have a dog and I have a dog and I see Big Bear and and I'm like, dang, I love Big Bear. Hope you have a great day. I love the kerning on your shirt. Mark I love just the said kerning. this has great kerning. It in is the logo. really nice kerning. It's nice kerning. It's see, true. I Maybe think people are responding to the kerning. I think that's it. I think like <laughs> the problem with Mark. cat calling is you need to know the person, and for you. Kerning, um, you're right? You know, great that's... kerning, baby. <laughs> Here, wait, but <laughs> that's a cat call you would love. So you're, <laughs> yikes, uh, my, Mark. Uh, so okay, you're saying what is the problem? Mating calls are mating calls. Why can't I just give a stranger a compliment? Yes, and okay. I think that it is. It also comes down to uh, tone of the man. I'm only going to talk about this for men because Law and Order has construction workers that are like, nice tits, babe. And then, and then there's a body like that sucks. That is not cat calling to me. That is like stereotypical cat calling that I know happens everywhere, but that's not the cat calling I'm talking about. Okay. I'm not talking about like, I want to yank your hair and feed you Doritos unless that would work on you. Um, <laughs> like <laughs> I think it might work. So <laughs> I don't think that's cat calling. Though. That's just like a language of love. Right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Put me in pigtails and yank on those babies and feed me chips. Great. <laughs> it's a, he has to really slow down the car to yeah. yell all of it, but super <laughs> worth it. Here's what I want to do to you in a consensual way. Still cat calling and I'm not on board, but go ahead. But that's the thing that I want to ask about right. is that like, like I do like cat calling to me, if you, if done right in the right way and the other person is in the right mood and you can hit that bullseye, right. it is, it is a shot worth shooting. Um, if you're just saying something to get a rise out of you and you actually hate women or you want to like break like you want to hurt her to make yourself feel better or make her uncomfortable to make yourself like I that's not what I'm talking about. Right. And I, it sounds like these people loved your papa color. They love I think they loved my papa color and they were responding to me on a gray January day in a way that made me feel good. So, yes, there is like a cat calling, I guess, really is a gray area because in that on that day I like put it on my Instagram story both times I was like this is kind of nice but also like I would love you to dig into why you would never shout at a woman on the street um, how does it make you feel if you think about that if you're like oh I saw a hot girl on the street and I just wanted to be like what's up baby why would you not do that because it doesn't work right 
And also, how does it make you feel? Um, pathetic because I'm driving, I'm running away. Like, is- I think it's like, I think, well, I think there's the difference between catcalling because you want to fuck somebody or you want to go on a date or whatever that is. Sure. And you doing like a nice drive by compliment. <laughs> like I have a friend, he's a comedian <laughs> and now he has, compliment. he has, he has millions of followers across every single platform. He's a, his name is Josh. He's mm-hmm. a comedian mm-hmm. and his whole thing is like, Hey, and then somebody comes to the car window and he's like. I hope you have a really great day. You have really nice hair. And then they're like, oh my God, thank you. And like, it's this whole drive by compliment. I'm making the world a better place. I'm what you would think would normally put you back on your heels is here to make you feel good, which makes me feel good, which helps the world, blah, blah, right, blah. Right. And so, but that's not cat calling. That's like drive by complimenting. It's all a gray area. And right. I think you and I could get into it and do a whole goddamn episode about this because there are 18 ways to feel about it. Like, obviously, I've felt it different times in my life i felt very differently about you know being shouted at on the street by guys i cultivated it at one point in my life when i was like coming into my sort of like teenage fucking ooh, i've got sex appeal and i like want guys to notice me i would love to walk by 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 a path walk by a bunch of guys and have them look at me and and respond to me and then after i'd had a couple of really bad scary encounters with men i didn't want that anymore and i started having to hide and then they would still cat call me and i was like oh this is fucking weird like i'm just now in a body that elicits a response from men no matter what i wear like i can go to the fucking laundromat with you know messy hair and glasses and fucking stained sweats and be shouted at for my body just as much as i am when i'm dressed up to go out on the town. And so that was a whole new realization that was also scary. And then you get to a point in your life where maybe you stop getting cat called because you're like at a different weight or your body just is, you know, looks different or you're a different age and you're like, oh, I miss that. And then you feel guilty about that, which is another thing that happened to me at a certain point where I was like, oh, I haven't gotten cat called in a while. Hmm. Am I okay with that? Like, you know, women, I think, especially as you age and you start becoming less and less visible to society, you start wondering if you're going to get attention and whether it's good or bad, it's still attention. And like, there's that complicated relationship. Sure. I mean, that's what Real Housewives made a fucking fortune on. Right. It's like, it's just fucking crazy. So I think like, I have a complicated relationship with it, but I did enjoy it on that day too, because I thought it was, I mean, it's an oversized fucking hoodie. I'm not showing my body. So I think it really was about the, you know, the color and like maybe a cute face above it. Yeah. I would say the confidence, the walk, the strut, the dog, yeah. <laughs> the angle, the outside, the gray day, and people are trying to put a little positivity into it. I'm glad that you could. It sounds like you're coming around to taking it as a compliment. Definitely. Cool. Definitely. Great. But I also wanted to dig in a little bit to like the, yeah, all the aspects of it because I did have someone slide into my DMs to neg me when I posted. And I was like, people are giving me compliments on the street. And he was like, oh, are you sure you're wearing pants? Maybe that cat call was for your dog. And I was like, oh my God. Why can't you just be like, yeah, you look nice today. Uh, I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah, fuck that person. <laughs> so funny. That's like. I was like, okay, bro. Yeah. Fuck that person. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Oh, my goodness. Like, the, the if your choice is say nothing and say that, say mm-hmm. nothing, bitch. I, I just listened to a fabulous new podcast called If Books Could Kill, where they're doing an airport airport book every episode where they break down why they're bad wonderful podcast highly recommend to listen and they just did the game <laughs> i read the game you did you know my good friend brian Houlihan. yeah when we were both bartenders at second city um i was reading dirt the motley crew biography and okay. he was reading the game yeah and we swapped and we both read each other and then we would be at the front bar and <laughs> like and we would be like in our heads was the game and, and being dirt. motley crew oh, and it goodness. was it was pretty fun <laughs> Fuck you, Mark. <laughs> Hello, yikes. Yeah. 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 I read the game. Yeah. Did And did you, how, how do you feel about it? How did you feel about it? Um, I think it's for weak people who have no um, clear idea of who they are. Right. Like who think that shouting at a stranger on the street is a good idea. Yeah. Right? Like the idea of peacocking and learning magic to trick women into threesomes by using certain verbiage and all that shit is, right. um, it's, it's what, it's what people who are not alphas think alphas do. So they think that they're <laughs> alphas, but they're not alphas. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? It's, totally. It's a guppy who has some sparkles on and they're like, well, this is what I got. So I got to use what I have the best of my ability. And there's yeah. no shame in that except that it's trickery. And it then is. after after you get past that first, like it's like once you learn the card trick, they're no longer a magician. And I, that's how I feel about the game is like once you get past that first hookup, yep. then they're no longer magic. They're just like this fucking dweeb. 
Yeah, they used a trick. They used a trick. I, so I, it's for weak people. I, yeah, I would I would totally agree with you. I remember the first time I got nagged, truly, where it was a guy who I worked with, um, and he was kind of like a schlubby dude from Sheffield, from England, and he had this sort of terrible Sheffield accent, and he had like, that was a bad Sheffield accent, but he had like kind of like a weird, and he was just podgy, and he, like, he wasn't that cool is what I'm trying to say. And he was like, you know, you're like doing great. He was the bar manager and he was like, you're doing a great job and everything, but you would do so much better if you lost five pounds. And this, I was 20 or 21. I think I'd just come out of theater school. I felt great about myself. I was top of the world and everything. And all of a sudden he sent me into such a dark place with this couch compliment, compliment that had this nag in it. And it really fucked with me. And I was like, um, much nicer to him in a weird way after that. Cause I was like, Oh, if he, if he can like say this negative thing to me and kind of put me on his level. I'm just going to, it was, it was really interesting the way it worked. And I was like, it, it is a fucking trick. Did any part of that make you <laughs> want to lose five pounds? Yeah, absolutely. It made me feel terrible about myself. And I, um, you know, had always sort of like struggled with like what my body looked like, especially after I like got big boobs and stuff and being told to lose five pounds at that point when I was 20 or 21 stuck with me. It's always stuck with me. That's one of the weirdest, um, things that men can use co to control women is like compliment or comments on weight and that was that's the biggest one that i've encountered i had a horrible ex who really that was what he used to fuck with me uh white lotus season two. Oh yeah right with yeah. the with the i think it was the macarons in the first yep. episode or two for uh peppa pig yeah exactly that whole, yeah right? and then she stuck sticks around and uh, gets murdered by the gays no oh, spoilers don't shut it's up terrible it's not even a good season oh Relax, my god everyone. wow spicy meatball over here <laughs> hating on white lotus <laughs> jesus all right moving on i guess <laughs> are you mad because i don't like nagging well here's the thing about nagging mary jane <laughs> Is wow. that a good Sheffield? I mean, it's as good as his was. <laughs> fucking Paul, that fucking guy. All right, what what's next? I just think like, I, no, I can keep saying more. This weed should be called truth serum. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, it's fucking camp fruit. I'm smoke more of this um, truth him. serum. The thing, okay, we are at a time when I think myself included, I am 10 times more comfortable texting someone than actually talking to them. And okay. I think that's pretty universal. Yes, DMs so, and texts. So when it comes to trying to hit on someone you're attracted to and you're not either one sloppy drunk in a bar, two on a shitload of drugs, dancing, sweaty, where like no words need to be said. It's a vibe and that's what's going on here. But in like the world and in life, like how the hell do you talk to anybody anymore? Like I, I think like the world is so scary and full of fear and you mm -hmm. say the wrong thing and you're you could lose your fucking job you could lose your house you could lose your kid like real shit could happen if that person drove by you and cat called you and you were a different type of person they said the wrong thing and that went online like shit what? goes crazy you could, i'm so i lost you completely what are you talking about you could lose your house your job and your kid for cat calling someone that's insane you can literally rape someone and get away with it what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> in our crazy world okay that's a great point dude that's a great point. What are you talking about? That's I, absolutely insane. Men can shout anything they want at women and never suffer any repercussions. And you can be Bill Cosby and rape a bunch of people and go on tour. Like, So we're going to edit that part out. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I don't want to edit right. any of this. I just I have no idea what you're talking about. I think that's... See, <laughs> fuck, man. That's why I love talking to you about this shit is because okay. like... I'm I'm a I am a dumb dude at my core, and I try and be as elevated as possible. But I will never be able to put myself in like a woman's shoes. So oh when I God, think of yes. things like that, I forget about Brock Turner and I forget about Bill Cosby. I just think about like me and my homies trying to like chop it up at an In and Out at one in the morning. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, and that's yeah. the crazy thing. We never forget, and we're constantly feeling sick and afraid <laughs> yeah. all the time, and we're still required to be funny about it and be cool about it. But like the reality is. It's interesting that you brought up Brock Turner. I just read um, Chanel Miller's memoir. She's the woman who Brock Turner raped and then was convicted of raping and then got a light sentence for. Good kid or whatever the fucking what judge said. Promising young man. Yeah. Chanel Miller wrote an amazing memoir called Know My Name about it. She was, um, I don't, she was uh, the uh, anonymous during the um, trial. She was known as Emily Doe. And then um, she came out and she was like, Know My Name is the title of her book. Emily or Chanel Miller is her name and she writes so eloquently about all of it and um it's an incredible read anyway I just want to say if anyone's looking for a fantastic memoir to read about that sort of experience but like one of the biggest things that she puts into real perspective is what is expected of her as the victim 
versus what is expected of him as the fucking rapist and how she is absolutely, you know, and we all know this, like rape victims are the ones who are put on trial. What were you wearing? What were you doing? How much did you have to drink? Why were you there in the first place? All of that. Yeah. And he was like, Stanford swimmer. Here's his GPA. He's so good looking. Here's his background. And that's the thing is like men don't ever have to really remember the realities of it. And we do. We're taught all of the things to you know, get around safely in this world. And, you know, that's, that's the reason that like rape culture is a term. It's like we're taught to exist within it and just make sure that it never happens to us by doing all of these things correctly. And the onus is on the women who are largely the ones who are victimized by rape. Of course, many other people are as well, but I'm just speaking from my own experience. Like I was taught a certain set of fucking rules and I was like, well, what about the rules that are governing? Like, why aren't, why don't, why aren't they taught to not do that? behavior yeah why do i have to worry about what i'm doing so it's just anyway that was a bit of a soapbox and i got derailed but it does make me upset because like yeah dudes dudes are like what do you say why are you cool with you know be cooler or why are you so uptight or why are you so mad or why are you so upset all the time yeah it's because it's like it's been since i you know was first yelled at by a stranger where i've like had to act differently and we're we learn victim blaming as dudes Right? Like, that's got to be part so of it. So the entire culture victim blames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Media, dudes, the fucking government, the lawmakers, the courts, everyone does. It's hard. <laughs> it's a hard It's a hard topic. I, I don't know where to transition to from that, honestly, because, like, we started at catcalling and how it did make you feel good, and now we're talking about Brock Turner, and I feel like they are all connected. I just don't know where to go from here because it's not my story. Yeah. Yeah. So are we, are we like, where do you want to go? I don't know. Okay. I just think it's an interesting conversation to have. And you, like you said, you were like, you could lose your life or your job or whatever. For, for complimenting for, someone. For complimenting yeah. someone. I'm like, what are you talking about? Men get away with everything all the time. And especially now, historically, women's rights are being rolled back even further because of like now lack of access to fucking reproductive care. So it's like you get assaulted and then you also don't have the right to like any anything well, after I'll that tell you what mary jane what you just made me think of and you know what's true do you know the um police story that's happening in the news right now running the train on uh those four police officers running the train on the female police officer all all um all consensual but on at work and in the locker room they were having like orgies and shit like that with this one woman no married woman um well the marriage part doesn't really matter as much as the train part um, running the train meaning they all had sex with her yeah yeah, yeah. okay and they would all do drugs and they would be drinking on the job okay. and they would all just have orgies and they got caught and now they've all been fired of course okay but the 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 um outside of the hack jokes about like train and police and like bad comedy uh the hot take all over twitter from dudes is how she's so ugly why would they lo- why would they want to lose their job over that mm. And so I think that ties directly into what you're saying, where it's like there's no consideration for her. There's no consideration for what the situation was. It's just a bunch of people being like, yo, she's too ugly to lose your job over for something like that. And that's the general take right Mm -hmm. now. That's the hot take. Right. Right. Fucking hell, man. (laughs) Damn. Damn. Damn, talk about third eye being open. Fucking it's, hell. I mean, you know, you you and I have gotten into it here on this podcast, like I think, you know, many times now over the years about like your experience as a dude and my experience as a woman and where they totally, you can't even understand the other person. Like I don't. Certainly, you know, I remember the first time I told you like about holding keys in my fist when I walked down the street or anything. You were like, whoa, that's that sounds so, crazy. That sounds crazy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. To I just, be fair, you were dressed as Wolverine. Sure. <laughs> yes i was yeah um but yeah i mean i'm I, I don't know i think it's an ongoing conversation i'm always happy to have it with you i think there aren't that many places where people can turn to hear a conversation between people like you and me you know it's usually like conf- bias confirmation like people just being like we're on the same side and we're all talking about the same thing in the same way so yeah i'm excited to talk to you and have you like make some make some crack that makes me upset and then go off on it a little bit okay good you know yeah, because I don't expect to solve anything, but I'm here to listen and, but also like say what I think is true and meet in the middle and have a deeper understanding of Great. how things work. That's a good goal. I think it's an excellent goal. Cool. We'll be right back. You know, when you're seshing with a friend and you get that familiar feeling? You mean that feeling when all is right in the world? Well, that and also cotton mouth. Oh, yeah. When your mouth feels dry as a desert and you can't drink enough water. Yep. Well, Xylodent is here to help. Xylodent helps soothe your cotton mouth and it freshens your breath. Xylodent is all natural and sugar-free. 
Xylodent tablets are vegan, kosher, and made from non-GMO xylitol. They're easy to chew and come in a ton of tasty flavors like peppermint, pomegranate raspberry, and cinnamon. I love how long-lasting that flavor was. The relief from my cotton mouth was lightning quick. Try it yourself. Go to xylodent.co and order yours now with free shipping. Get 25% off your purchase with code WEEDANGRUB25. That's xylodent. X-Y-L-I-DENT. Like dentist. xylodent.co. Go to xylodent.co and use code WEEDANGRUB25 for 25% off. Say goodbye to Cottonmouth and hello to Fresh Breath. With Xylodent. Goodbye, Cottonmouth. Want to get to the news? I would love to get to the news. Okay. Um, this news is actually brought to you by Quinn. Uh, Quinn is presenting the Grublet Gazette with Sweet Life, which is their alt cannabis brand that explores um, cannabinoids found in hemp like Delta 9, Delta 8, and HHC. I like it because if you don't live in a state where weed is legal, you can order Quinn. Go to myquinn.com, use code Weed and Grub for 30% off, and get yourself some peanut butter marshmallow cookies, coconut dragon fruit cookies, dark chocolate cappuccino cookies, toffee Oreo cookies, orange pistachio cookies. Um, yeah, check them out at myquinn.com. That's M-Y-Q-W-I-N.com. Use our code Weed and Grub for 30% off, and they've got like a whole roster of products. It's actually a really exciting um, website to scroll around on. It is, and it all comes in like Happy Meal looking bags yeah. so if you get a bunch of vapes and stuff it's pretty fun Check i like it i smoke it um weed and grub 30 percent off nice. which actually ties into what i wanted to do for our news story for the grub look is it this week okay and that is noma closing yeah so i read a shitload of articles so i'm not going to cite one source as i share what i know just google it and then you'll find these things as well okay <laughs> so noma's closing at the end of the year renee redzepi number one restaurant in the world three michelin stars game changer Game changer since El Bulli is shutting its doors. And yes. there is like a lot to unpack about it. I, I want to hear everything. That's pretty much all I know. I read the article in the New York Times that announced the closing and said that they're going to still do pop ups around the world. Yeah. And like, you know. Yeah, they did still one in active. Japan. They did. They've done pop ups. They did a one lot. in Tulum. Yeah. I know they've got yeah. one in Kyoto, I think. Um, and that uh, Rene Redzepi will still like head up the sort of the Noma brand, for lack of a better word. Like, I guess that Mo Noma will still sort of exist as a company and that Rene Redzepi will still be working with the company. Yeah. OK. Um. So many places to go. If you don't know their food, it is a very expensive tasting menu, like 500 bucks a plate in, um, what the fuck is it called? Copenhagen, Denmark. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's, what, what's the um, type of cuisine that it was sort of cited as being the, you know, opening up? It was like Nordic something. Yes. Nord, I don't know the other word for Nordic, but it was like, it'll be like moldy asparagus, but it tastes great right. and it's safe. Or like an entire duck and the feathers. I have a picture of it I can show you. It, the duck head is on the thing. Just it's a mallard head. Yeah. Um, they use molds. They use, I don't know about parasites, but I almost said parasites. Sure. I just don't want to lie about this part. Um, but it's like pine you know. sap and, you know, like, yeah, trees and branches and mosses. Hey, and check out this. Foraged. That's, that was one of the things on their most recent tasting menu. That's amazing. That's wild. So that this picture, we'll throw it on our Instagram. Our Instagram is fucking back. Fuck you, Meta. That's right. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll put this on the carousel for this week, but this raised a lot of fucking yeah. red flags because it's a whole duck cooked, but then the wings and head are also on the dish, and um, it's an upsetting. And to it was look upsetting to a lot of people. Sure. And he's like, "I'm sorry, don't you want to know where your food is coming from?" Right. Anyway, I'm high. This is a tangent. Um, it's closing its doors. It is an unsustainable business model, and there are a lot of people who are up in the air and are like, "Yeah, you didn't pay." most of your employees, or at least half, and other people were like, yeah, and Rene Redzepi, you came out with an essay in 2015 where you came forward and said, I was a bully, I grabbed people, I sent them home, I yelled at people, and I'm embarrassed about it, it's how I was raised as a cook, generational trauma, blah, 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 breaking the cycle, blah, 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 I'm trying, I'm growing, I'm learning. Um, and now they're going to do fucking pop-ups, which to me is a path Oof, that bums me out so okay. much. So where do you want to start? Do you want to start with workforce, cook life, or what it takes to be great? First, I want to start with why pop-ups bum you out. Because, man, that's like, you know, if you have, if when a when a band has a one hit wonder mm. and they and it's like just play the fucking song, we're all here to play the song, and you have to like listen to all these other not good songs to get to the banger. Okay. Like I feel like Noma should go out with a bang and not a fucking fizzle. Like it is a one hit wonder. There will never be another restaurant like it. So why are you doing all these pop ups all over the world to try and sustain something? Do something brand new. Go into your blue period and create something new. Don't live on the coattails of Noma and what it is, so that you can still go around the world 
fucking f- start fresh and push yourself. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And now the culture of the restaurant. The culture of the restaurant? Yes. Look. Okay. Well, let me read facts and then I'll give my opinion. Okay. I'm so... This this shit makes me mad. It, man. Well, it's interesting to to drop this into an episode with a, that started with this conversation about like sexual harassment, catcalling, the culture of like men and women and toxicity and all that kind of stuff. Because I know sort of famously that like Noma has really been put on blast as one of these places where there was this like you know really bad environment for a lot of people who ultimately accused. Red, I think I want to hear, but accused Redzepi of like being you know. Toxic towards women, right? Um, I the women part I don't know. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but some of them are women. Okay. I just don't want to say some of them are women. Yeah, I don't right. want to say all women because I don't have the accuracy of that. Okay. Um, hold on, I just want to get every cookie following me. It's so important. <laughs> I want oh all the God. cookies. Accept or deny. Accept or deny. Um. So this is from his essay directly. Okay. Um. I watched chef mine and others bully and humiliate to wring results out of their cooks. When I became a chef, I promised myself that I would never do that. Concurrently, I did. Um, I've been bullying for a large part of my career. I've yelled. I've pushed people. I've been a terrible boss at times. For some reason, I'm particularly bothered when I remember a girl from Columbia who was working for us that I really liked. One night, we had big-time guests in the restaurant, journalists from somewhere, who cares? Uh, I gave her directions, and she said, yes, chef, and then she didn't do what she was told after saying, yes, chef. This happens. People say it. But this went, uh, but I went completely crazy. I pulled her out of service and I screamed at her, what the fuck are you doing? Go home. It was a really bad moment. We tried to work it out, but we could never work it out. And my sous chef, who I trust, said, I have to tell you, you stepped over the line and you owe her one for that. So that kind of shit is what he wrote about. Screaming in kitchens. Screaming in kitchens. If you've worked in a kitchen, you have been screamed at. Super pressure. I think that's not any surprise. Nope. Also, that's what it takes to be great. I totally, totally, totally disagree with that. Oh, I totally disagree with you. And I think it's part of the fucking problem. Um, You do not have to scream at someone to be great. The best of everyone I've ever worked with are all people who have not screamed at me. Meaning fishing boat captains and theater directors and fucking heads of kitchens. Including Jean-Georges Von Der Eichten, who does not yell. I think that... I was just a cook tech girl, but I know he didn't yell at his staff. Well, but I think that... You weren't there to be great at being a great chef. Oh, but I was great on the boat, and I was great in theater, and the people that I loved working with didn't yell at me. So I'm saying like- Right, the, but you're talking about a criteria. community. You're not talking about a man who is at a alien level who understands what it takes to be great sure. and cannot find the people to surround himself with who also want that for themselves. And I think that would be maddening if you're at that level. Like to reach the level of Rene Redzepi, it's maddening if everyone around you is not there to make sure that a picture is straight. I don't care. I don't think it's okay to scream at people like that. But that gets you to be great. I'm sorry, but like humiliation and shame, if you're built the right way to reach the pinnacle of your own success and what you want in the world, you've got to be broken down to be built back up stronger. It's just like any muscle. If you were doing bicep curls or you were doing the crossword puzzle, you have to break muscles down to build them up stronger. And being yelled at sometimes, you fucking deserve it. And being like something thrown at you sometimes, you're never going to forget it. And I don't think you'll ever be great without those moments of shame. I completely disagree. And I think that shame is the engine that fuels so much of the problems that we experience in our lives as humans, including the difficulties that we were talking about earlier with sexual harassment and all of that shit, that shame is like the fucking gas that powers the engine of all of the shit that's fucked up and wrong. And if people didn't use it as a fucking tool to control people that they want to do what they want to do, we'd be in a much better place. So I dis. Agree. Michael Jordan, absolute asshole. I don't care. Rene Redzepi, absolute asshole. Right. Uh, I don't admire uh, either of these people. Absolute asshole. Picasso was a fucking nightmare. Dolly was a fucking megalomaniac. I'm Uh, lots of great uh, artists. Who's the Who's the director? Coppola. All of them. One hundred million thousand takes to break you down to finally get you to cry. I don't fucking care. I don't. I'm. I'm just saying they've done those things, and we can appreciate some of that artwork. But I don't agree with those. I'm not saying in order to be great, you need to scream at people. Okay, let me reframe it a different way. Jesus. Let me reframe it a different way. Let me (laughs) reframe it a different way. It is no one's business what he does there. It's my business if I work for him and he's screaming at me. Let me. That's what. Let me reframe it. God damn, girl. Let me reframe it. If you're there. And you have a singular goal in mind, and it is to become your own greatness. He should not be publicly punished for his actions and your actions in those moments. That is private shit. And the moment that 
Dirty Laundry is aired instead of talking about it and figuring it out, you're welcome to leave. You're welcome to do anything except stay there. But it is not my job in culture to judge him and his choices or her and her choices. She fucked up. He yelled at her. She is not going to fuck up again, but that is not my business. And she quit. And that is absolutely her business as well. So I would take it as like, if you don't want to be a part of that team and how that team is run, public shaming is not the answer. I don't agree on public leave. shaming either, but the culture of silence is what enables abusers. Fuck, that's true too, though. Yeah. The culture of silence and shame is what enables abusers. And I say this as someone who lived through an abusive relationship and fucking hit it for a long time and made sure that it, everyone was okay with this person because I was ashamed. The culture of fucking silence enables abuse. So if you are a person in a restaurant or any other industry who is screaming at people in a way that is truly like damaging to them on some level, emotionally, psychologically, you know, fi financially, if they lose their job over like you just hating them so much that you scream at them and fire them, any of those things, it shouldn't have to be like live in a culture of silence. I should be able to talk about it. And I don't think that the public shaming with social media is something that's great. I don't think the court of public opinion is where things should be tried, but I also shouldn't have to be silent and complicit. Yeah, but I th okay. Then I uh, then I need to police <laughs> the way it comes out. Sure, I need to police the the way it's framed, and I need to police the context of why you're saying these things in public. Because if it is to make you feel better about a situation that hurt your feelings, I'm sorry, grow the fuck up. Like you've got to do better. And right, it's but also not if it's you. reporting someone who sexually assaulted me, then I should be able to do that. Hundred percent. And I don't think we're talking about that with Renee Redzepi as right. far as we're, everything. Right, we are I getting read. off track. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, cool. Because like, okay, so to get into the reason that they're closing, I mean, this is going to be our whole. I love this shit. <laughs> um, some of the reasons that they're closing is it's not a sustainable, even at five hundred bucks a plate. Right. Um, half of their staff, like thirty-four people, are paid cooks, line cooks. The other half, interns, stage. 30 people so it's 34 to 30 split wow not being paid i did read can i just say in the new york times story about it there was a girl a woman who came to stage and she arrived and she, all she did was make beetles did you read that part she no. made beetles from like a preserved some kind of like you know fig jam for lack of a better term that was like basically turned into tar and her whole stage was using this incredible stencil of a beetle and putting this sort of like jam into that stencil and pulling it off and just creating this gorgeous edible beetle out of this weird jam and that's all she did and she had showed up to learn from the greatest in the greatest restaurant in the world and she was like i was so disappointed because this was months of my life was just doing this one well thing. she's dumb She's not dumb. She was misled. She was she no. she, she, she didn't take advantage of an opportunity. If you are there, oh my you God, have my, every I'm, opportunity. No, fuck off. Oh my God, Mary Jane. <laughs> I hate that. I worked the door at the Hollywood improv. Yes. Two weeks later, I'm getting paid to write jokes for people because I put myself out there. I did my job better than everyone else so that you couldn't fuck with me when it came time for me to make my own path. So her version of that would be that she showed up and she did the beetle so well that she was then able to do anything else, but she wasn't. They only allowed her to make the beetle. They only ever her allowed her to work the door. They didn't give her the opportunity to do anything else. It's different. You worked your way up. In the Noma documentary, given but, that opportunity. Okay. But in the Noma documentary, which I've watched three times, okay, there is a woman in it who started as an intern, mm -hmm. and then she got onto the line, yeah. and then became a saucier, and they were doing brand new um dishes create your own dish interns could do it line cooks could do it everyone could do it and it's create your own dish here's the ingredients this is for our new season find something interesting find something new and she created a it was like bull semen dish gross <laughs> but she won okay she won she was an intern who made bold choices, okay. who did cool shit, and now she's on the line, and she's on her way, Let me and get this she right. made a bull semen dish that everyone was like, damn, we can't and fuck with this. And this is in a documentary about Noma? Yeah. And who do you think produced the documentary about Noma and was an executive producer on that? This is like fucking Michael Jordan producing The Last Dance. This is like anyone making a documentary about themselves that shows them in a great light. Of course that story is in a documentary about Noma. It's great. It is it's great. It's a woman succeeding and doing awesome shit. Then there's this other story of this woman right. who showed up and gave six months of her life to a stage at Noma and wasn't able to do anything and didn't advance that story is not in the documentary but it was reported in the new york times and i think that's also part of the fucking story so both are you saying both things can be true yes okay i agree with that um so a big part of this was also that the um interns were forbidden to, from laughing in the kitchen oh my god this is this is the reason it's closing man i'm sorry but i'm gonna go back to about what it takes to be great in a second mm -hmm. um 
Uh, a former Noma intern described his time at the restaurant as being akin to being kidnapped from life due to the grueling schedule. Awful. Until just a few months ago, approximately 30 interns worked unpaid 16-hour days. The Financial Times also mentioned one front-of-house intern who allegedly recalls seeing kitchen interns be made to pluck feathers off of ducks outside in the freezing rain. Cool. A former intern said that the restaurant misled interns about the number of hours they would work before they arrived. Then fucking quit. Then quit. Yo, dude, you are- Quit. Oh, God. I don't even enjoy talking like this with you because it it's upsetting. I know. When you say that. But I and also- And I don't like it because you're wrong and that's abusive and he shouldn't be allowed to hire those interns who come with hopes and dreams and have invested in that fucking experience and then they show up and they're abused and then you're like, well, fucking quit. That's just like any fucking woman showing up to any job and doing like everything she possibly can to be doing it and then still met with like, but you're not meeting my fucking expectations, so just fucking quit. And she has to do everything twice as well as a dude and fucking, you know, backwards, backwards and, and high, high heels, heels yeah. to do. And then it's like, oh, but you don't fucking like that you're being asked to work that hard, then quit. Fuck all of that. That is patriarchal fucking bullshit. Those interns shouldn't have been forced to do that and they shouldn't have to quit. They should be treated in a way that is like, you know, a fucking laboratory for their, you know, like aspirations as young chefs. They should be able to show up. If it's not for them, sure. But this is actual, you're you're describing abusive situations. Yes, maybe. I can't fully agree with you, but I hear you. Um, I also read in these articles about the person who sold their car and everything they owned to make $15,000 for themselves mm -hmm. so that they could work there as a stage for a whole year. How'd it go? Now they're a head chef and they have a Michelin star. Great. So, I, you know, for every wild success story and anything and every other thing, mm -hmm. right, yes, there's the gray area. Again, to me, Noma would not be the best restaurant in the world consecutively. The Shining would not be one of the best movies of all time. Michael Jordan wouldn't be the best basketball player of all time. And I know I'm talking about all men in this situation. Yeah. But like and also, what it takes Kubrick to be great. famously an asshole? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, he's a nightmare. Oh. Super nightmare. Um, But uh, like akin to like a Kazan when he like, you know what I mean? Um, sure. All men of that, are assholes basically. Men are assholes. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. We, yes, but. Um, and they're like, this is the way to be also. But it's also hard for me oh, as Jesus. a man when it comes to my own hopes and dreams and aspirations and vision, yeah, it's hard to argue when a vision is that successful against the well, idea of it. And that's just what you showed as the fucking model is that like successful men are assholes. Therefore, if I want to be successful, I should be an asshole. Yeah. Fuck no. Right. Gordon Gecko, right? Fuck no. Yeah. I don't need to be an asshole to be successful. In fact, I repudiate anyone who believes that and I don't want to work with those people. And I think that, you know, like there are plenty of people in the world that I can look to as fucking men mentors and inspirations who are not assholes that I really do want to emulate and work for and with and you know just surround myself with and you know like what I show up yeah Mark gave me the thumbs up thanks Mark you know like that's why we're here that's why you and I work together like mm -hmm. because we fight respectfully when we disagree we have learned a communicativeness where it's under like we're like okay everything we're saying right now is with respect I'm not going to make you feel like hopefully disrespected or insulted or if I mishear you then like let's hash it out like we have found a way to communicate that's never gonna feel like this fucking craziness that you're talking about with the screaming and the abuse because if, if I ever felt that in this relationship I would I certainly wouldn't be here neither would I right so why why would I say to you yes I think this is like a good environment that's gonna forge a successful person I don't I don't believe it I don't believe it I think you succeed despite that like maybe yeah for sure like all of the shit that I've that's happened to me in my life has made me tougher absolutely no yeah. question yeah what doesn't you know hurt you or kill you makes you stronger to some degree it also fucks you up and like I'm I'm not necessarily a better person because of all of it or a stronger person I'm dis despite it. I am where I am despite that, not because of it. Like, I have made it this far in my life with all of the nonsense that's happened to me. I've made it this far despite all of it. Yeah. And I think, like, if I move through the world with, like, tons of fucking compassion and kindness and no need to scream at people, like, that's just going to make my world a better place. And I hope that, you know, that's the world that would Renee Redzepi would hopefully espouse moving forward. Like, be better, do better, be nicer, give some money back to the fucking... People who you fucked over. Go teach some free classes. I don't know. Something. Something. Give back. Yeah. Okay. 
I like that we can talk about these things because yeah. this actually curtails into um, something that we both agreed on. Okay. Even though we disagree on Noma. Although I will say. I don't know if we do disagree on Noma. I don't think we Noma. disagree. Yeah. I think we completely agree on Noma. And I'm just like yeah. mad about dudes being fuck faces. Yeah. And I'm mad <laughs> about people not it, like being weak and then calling him out because they couldn't hack it. Right. And I also am hearing an undercurrent of you being mad that sometimes people are like. Um, put on blast when you feel like it should be handled privately. Yes. It's like a note that I heard in there that I do want to call attention to. 100%. Yes. 100%. I, I totally do agree for sure. Some shit should be handled privately. Yo, when that Chris D'Elia stuff came out, which uh -huh. I don't fuck with him, let's just call that out right away. Sure. But we, we read some of the things on there and I was like, okay, this is some clout chasey sure. weird bullshit. Right. Um, Anyway, I shouldn't bring him up because he groomed underage girls. He's a piece of shit. But right. anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Like, we're just stepping in fucking landmines this whole episode. We're like, sexual assault, catcalling, harassment, toxic masculinity, the patriarchy, Crystalia. <laughs> we said we were going to revamp this year, and we have vamped, yo. That's what I'm saying. You got to quit oh, Noma, man. start something new, dude. I hope people are having a good time listening to us, because I'm having a great time getting spicy. Um, well, we tried to watch pressure cooker oh on netflix oh my god we're gonna go off on this too let's go because um we both do not like pressure cooker on netflix right yet good friend of the show good friend of mine edinburgh fucking co-headliner julian stern he comes out with something called the sternal journal every sunday you can subscribe to it it's on Substack. sternal journal and his recommendation this week was definitely check out pressure cooker wow. as his thing to watch he said and i quote oh julian pressure cooker where is it's it? It's on Netflix. If you haven't seen it, I think it's eight episodes. Top uh, Chef meets Survivor slash Big Brother. That's all it is. That's all it needs to be, especially a nice watch for those who liked the menu. And the menu, of course, is after Noma. Right. So I wanted to tie these two things in together. Great recommendation on the menu. Everyone should see it. It's streaming right now. Fucking fantastic skewering of that whole fucking elite dining world and beauty so culture. So funny. It's so funny. Fucking great. Yeah. See it with people who like to laugh because you yes. should laugh. It is very dark. Yeah. But it's very fucking funny. Yeah. And you and I had a great time. Yeah. And two people walked out and I was like, fuck you. What? Also, <laughs> Irv's. You're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you're wrong. Also, the menu is doing a collab with Irv's Burgers if you're ah. living here in LA. And uh, it's a really good burger, double patty, uh, double cheese, Jesus. and a um, like a sauce with caramelized onions. Yeah. Great. And it's nine ninety five with cr uh, crinkle cut. The perfect burger yeah. at Irv's Burgers. Yeah. Uh, check it out. The menu is fucking awesome. Pressure cooker sucks. But pressure cooker. And you, yeah, uh, so you had watched it and you had told me that what you, you were like, I'm not into this. Let's, you know, let's watch it together. So we watched the first episode together. Um, I was very stoned. <laughs> so... I had kind of an extreme reaction to it because all I could think of was all of... So there's no host. There's no host. There's no judges, but the contestants are the judges. The contestants, it's 11 chefs introduced in the first episode, and there's just like a ticket that prints up in the kitchen that tells them what to do, and then they all have to get to cooking, and then they all judge each other's food, and the whole thing just seems like a fucking crazy like swirl of like they don't have fucking host to corral them and then i was just thinking about the story producers behind the fucking camera that's what they're called right yes that like the people behind the camera who are just having to work over time to instead of like communicating something to a host who can then on camera sort of like be a conductor for the whole situation they're having to wrangle these 11 cooks or chefs who are not on camera talent and they're being asked to like come up with their storylines come up with good dialogue come cook. up with conflict and cook not well. Not well. <laughs> not not great chefs. And then the whole show ends up being they they cook for very little of it. Yeah. And the food looks awful. <laughs> and the first person who gets sent home is for, it's for raw chicken. Like, what yeah. are you doing? This is amateur hour. Yeah. And they also pad the amount of time in the show by showing sleep montages. They show. I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is episode. This is the fucking first ep. Like, this should be the most exciting. Well, we need fifteen seconds of everyone. showing them sleep. Oh, I just was upset because it also just felt like, you know, when you talk to me about being a, a comedian right now, you're also being asked to be your own everything. Like, obviously, you have great representation and you were like, you're, you know, getting booked to perform live and stuff. But you're Hawaii still at the end of this month, San Francisco Sketch Fest in February. With me, I'll be there. End of February. I'm in Montana. That's right. OK, here we go. Come see Glazer on the road. Fucking awesome time. And it's, you know, to me, it's wild because you've got all of that going on. And yet... You're still having to do all of this sort of work on social media and all. Of, there's just a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that's constantly coming at you. Yeah. 
And I just felt for these cooks or these chefs who were like also being asked to just be everything else. It just felt crazy. It, was it like, felt crazy. They're not able to focus on the thing that they're ostensibly there to do. Cook. Right. Instead, they're just being asked to be these like, you know, characters for us to look at. <laughs> really well. So I think I have like um, the best view of a show like this because I was on a show like this. Mm -hmm. So the things that people might not realize when these shows happen is you're cooking and say you have 90 minutes to make your perfect dish that represents you to the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. The story producers are also there asking you to talk to all of your teammates, toss up like open-ended questions to get the dialogue going. So you're using a knife, you're in a kitchen that you don't understand, you're making something under a time limit, which you may or may not have ever practiced before, and you're being asked to get to know people with cameras in your face and listen to them and continue a conversation all while trying to win a hundred fucking thousand dollars. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Nobody can understand that until you actually have that happen to you. I can't imagine. Like, and also trying to be somehow like likable or interesting or make good TV. Like, yes. Be quotable. Which is why you want Crazy. judges. That's why you want hosts. You want people that'll take a little bit of pressure off of the contestants so that they're not doing everything. And I fucking guarantee it that the executive producers and the people who sold the show to Netflix were like, we can save so much money and keep that money for ourselves if we don't have anyone who has any taste or opinions or is good at their fucking job. Yeah. And instead, we're just going to like hire these cooks on a day rate and call it exposure on Netflix <laughs> and ask them to do it all themselves for no money. And that is such a super fucked up business model, but it is rampant right now and it is everywhere. And that's the other reason I hate pressure cooker. I cannot support. I'm pro Noma, but I hate pressure yeah, cooker. That's so but you know, what it's, are you going to do? Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, but I think that's because of caliber, too. Like yes. we talked about caliber. And to me, Noma is excusable in a lot of ways that Pressure Cooker is not because of the caliber of talent that we're talking about. Sure. And Top Chef, great show. Tom Colicchio, Padma, I hope that show is real. And I hope that everything that they do on it is because at the end of the day, best plate wins. Well, it seems like, yeah, that because when that guy won uh, not the season that was in the Northwest and that guy gave one and then it came out that he was actually a terrible person and he you know, had some questionable behaviors. Well, he, he cheated on his wife, fucked somebody who works there, fired, and her, fired her and then like moved yeah. on with his life. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that was clear that it was like f food before character because, you know, his food won. Because <laughs> anyway, I don't know. But like this, this show, Pressure Cooker, to me felt like the community theater of the <laughs> TV cooking world because it was like Nobody knows how to do any of these things. They're like trying to like execute like, you know, chicken and rice and they can barely do that because they're also having to make up dialogue, stand on a chair and deliver a speech, be oh, in a so confessional funny. and look interesting, show off their tattoos, talk about their backstory, look good on camera, forge a friendship with this other person. It was like, yeah, of course that person can't make chicken and rice because you're asking her to like literally spin plates. Like, yeah, it's a 16 hour day. And 90 minutes of a dish. The yeah. rest of the day is in confessional booths, sitting around with nothing to do. Oh, my goodness. Getting mic'd up. Yeah. Right? It's a 16-hour day. It felt crazy to yeah, me. Yeah, it's not a good show. I didn't Don't enjoy Don't support it. shows like that. <laughs> support shows that like have a have like funding to not take advantage of the people who are on them i know that did, that's kind of how it felt to me too as well and then when that guy was like you know i went to the culinary institute of america it's kind of like the hogwarts of the harry potter world for cooks and i was like who came up with that for this poor guy this story producer if you had a host you wouldn't be dealing with this kind of silliness like exactly case in point i think nikki glazer on um f boy island oh she's the best that show was absolute nonsense but it was so fun to watch because they had this incredible compelling funny cool gorgeous host who i think probably just hired some of her great friends to write her great jokes absolutely that show was awesome so like don't go with no host format in you know a world when you're like these these aren't even good cooks yeah <laughs> like yeah you need a good host you need yeah you need a leader in those mm -hmm. situations um the other part of that show that i have a problem with is um the end oh and so maybe we can like <laughs> maybe we can like talk about it again maybe it'll come up sure but uh i'd also like to hear if anyone actually watches the series who you thought should have won and why. Okay. Let's, I'll leave Let's it at that. Let's revisit in a couple of weeks when maybe everyone's had a chance. The people who want to watch it have had yeah. a chance. Or don't watch it. And that way they won't get a season two. Oh Whatever you want to do. <laughs> wow. <That's> spicy <laughs> meatballs. Where are we at? Yeah, we got a few minutes. Okay. Oh, I had a cool invention I wanted to tell you about. I would love to hear about it. Okay. So the other night I was making um, just like chicken and pesto. 
really okay. really easy and like i didn't make anything from scratch i bought it all at trader joe's and i just threw it all in a pot and made a big bowl it was raining out yeah. i needed to get high eat a big bowl of pasta and watch a movie ideal um watch amsterdam it's good and uh <laughs> anyway and but i was boiling the pot of water and i was also sauteing vegetables and i also had the chicken so i had all my burners going and i kept struggling to find a lid that worked and then i thought about that colander you have where it it kind of like folds up into a succulent and then it blooms out into a colander that you can strain things yeah in. it's just a little one of those steamer strainer thingies yeah so my idea is you take a lid and you have one lid that fits any size pot and it's like a fist and then you turn it counterclockwise and it spreads out a bit to fit the next size standard pot and then you turn it counterclockwise again and it spreads out to fit the next standard size pot and then you turn it again and that fits your like big you know double boil pot like that and then you can crank it all the way back down and store that fist in a drawer you want a telescoping lid is what you're saying a telescoping lid for all your pots and pans i love that idea or maybe not even telescoping like fanning out because telescoping would i think go this way and be conical to some degree i don't want want something that like opens up like a fan yes Great. Isn't that cool? I wonder if it exists. I didn't want to look and be bummed. I'd rather be excited about you invented what it feels in your like head. an original Yeah, thought. you should get the patent for that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sure there's a million of them out there, but I'd rather be pleased that I thought of it than anything else. I think it's a delightful idea, and I want to look into it. And if it exists, I'll get you one for your, I don't know, what's next? Birthday? Um, <laughs> Comedy show night opening? <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday. I don't know. I'll get you one for a Tuesday. Because I like you. Yeah, just get me a nice Tuesday okay. gift. Um, um, anyway, I, I, I got excited about that, so I wanted to pitch it. An expandable pot lid. I like it. Yeah. I, I would be down with it. And as, as a space saver, I just tried to get rid of a bunch of stuff from my kitchen because after we went to Costco. Gold member? Gold member. And we bought the... Um, I got the uh, that new set of Tupperware. I got a full, whole new set of, I threw out all my old Tupperware and I replaced it with a whole new set of Rubbermaids. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. I like, I just open the drawer and look at them sometimes. They're so nice. <laughs> they're all clean and new and they're all stacked really nicely. And then that gave me the impetus to like reorganize my kitchen a little bit. And I threw out a whole, I left a bunch of stuff on the curb the other day and it was all gone really quickly, which was so nice. That's really nice. And some of it was just like random pot lids. I was like, what does this even go to? Yeah. I don't know. I just had like a few pot lids left over. So awesome. And thermoses. For some reason, cannabis companies love Yo. giving you thermoses. Yo, can we put a cap <laughs> on thermos and lanyard t- lanyard giveaways? Nobody wants your fucking lanyard and nobody gives a fuck about your thermos. I'll take a Yeti. Yeah, yeah. But not a thermos. I'll take a Yeti any day. And I was given a Yeti thermos, actually. A very nice one. Do you I, still have it? I do. Yeah, it's damn really right. Nice. Um, thank you, Weed Maps. I and I just got a really nice thermos. Actually, I will say from Highway Cannabis, <laughs> I went to their opening the other night. It's a great store. Okay. It's in Marina. Um, they're doing a great job. They all have their own line. Um, this is not an ad, but I just really like what they're doing because they're keeping their prices low. They've got some really nice products. Um, their space is great. They have a flower bar. They've got a dab bar. I think they're going to do live events. So shout out Highway Cannabis and all of our cool friends who are like doing cool stuff with them over there. And um, why am I talking about them? Because what do you think I of got a, a thermos. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a great thermos from them, and it's a really nice one. And it's one of those, like, you know, I'm, I was just going to say it keeps cold things cold and hot things hot. But that's actually the definition of a thermos. So I got that. Okay. I don't like them because it's too much to carry anywhere. A thermos? Yeah. it's way it, Unless I'm, like, hiking, I'm not carrying a thermos. Give me a break. Okay. Too big, too bulky. I don't like holding anything in my hand when I'm moving around. I just don't see the convenience of a thermos. you don't even have a wallet or a case on your phone. You don't need a wallet. You carry a license and a credit card. You're good. Sure. That's all you need. Anyone who carries like a punch card for pizza. What do you do when you go hiking? Uh, Nothing. That way, if I'm found, I'm unidentified and I get on the news. No, I mean for a water bottle. Oh, (laughs) I thought you meant if I die. (laughs) I mean, yeah, if you die because you're not carrying water or a wallet, then I mean, good luck, I guess. Just found like a desiccated body on the trail. I have to identify you by, I don't even know. I'd just be like, yeah, that's Mike, definitely. <laughs> Are those his piercing hazel blue eyes? Say something like that. <laughs> yes, this is piercing hazel blue eyes and his beautiful teeth bones. It's Mike. It's for sure Mike Glazer. I know he has no ID <laughs> or phone or water. Of course he's dead. He has. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> anyway. No more thermoses. Well, we should start uh, thinking about wrapping up, though. Okay. Well, do you want to do buds of the week? Yeah. Well, do you want to go first or second? How about you? Okay. I have to pull up their well, um, first, IG, then. but I can talk. Oh, okay. 
which do you want to do? Well, I'll go first because uh, I'm thinking about my friend Connie, who I just spent the weekend with in Palm Springs, and she's my butt of the week. She's at Connie underscore web with two Bs underscore sketches on Instagram. She's an amazing artist and a friend who I met in the early aughts in Seattle, and we hung out in Seattle, and we went to Burning Man together years ago, but we hadn't seen each other in a long time, and she's in Palm Springs for a few weeks. So I went out and I spent like 24 hours with her and there's like nothing like reconnecting with someone you haven't seen in a long time who you knew really well at one point many years ago. And then you just are like, but we all used liked each other. So let's hang out again. And we did that. And we like ran around and ate some great Mexican food and saw some great art and climbed a mountain. And um, cool. Yeah, she's just the best. So she's my butt of the week. Can I ask you a butt of the week question? I know we usually don't ask questions. Oh, yeah. Um, did you have enough shared positive memories and experiences with her that it felt like you could pick up where you left off, even though it had been quite a bit of time? Yeah. Like you, you had made some core memories together. So this was like a revisit. It wasn't even that. It was just like, I, I liked you then. I like you now. Let's talk about new stuff now. Cause it's oh, a, you know, nice. a new era. Cause truly the last time we hung out was a solid 15 years ago. So I love that. Yeah. I love when you can like not talk about the past and just nostalgicize with Yo, each other no, yeah. and instead like actually catch up with the now. Yeah. What's going on now? What are you up? What are you up to? That's What's over nice. here? What is in this taco? Let's eat it together. <laughs> you oh, ate wow, a taco that together? Like that does sound like a sex joke. <laughs> like I went out to Palm Springs and- Cancel her, everyone. I want you to I'm pull the audio about. from this and I cancel her. <laughs> no, we went to a place called Clandestino and had delicious fish tacos. <laughs> it's true. We did. They were great. It's not an innuendo or a euphemism or anything like that. You are the color of your hoodie. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> it's reflecting in my blush. Who's your butt of the week, Mike? <laughs> I'm gonna just hold one more second. Mm -hmm. Let that let that part of you settle. I'm good. <laughs> my butt of the week this week is Chris Estrada. Um, he is at Chris Estrada Comic. Uh, season two of his show, This Fool, comes out on Hulu a little later this year. Great comic, great dude. Um, if you haven't seen This Fool on Hulu season one, also fantastic. Uh, but none of this is why he's my butt of the week. He is my butt of the week because he carries an umbrella as a man who goes and walks in, in the rain. And dudes do not carry umbrellas. And I love his confidence in carrying and walking around with an umbrella because especially as it's been pouring because of this atmospheric parade or whatever it's called uh, happening. I know you want to say the real answer. <laughs> I okay. know you want to say the real answer. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, dudes just walk around wet. And I don't want to see wet dudes. I don't want to see you wet. Okay. I want to see you clean and dry in an, in an indoor place. Don't show up wet. Uh, but dudes don't carry umbrellas for some reason. It, it's like some like, I'm no pussy ass, weak ass bitch. But Chris carries an umbrella with confidence. He means it. His girlfriend fit under it. Oh. Everything about it was like some real man shit. That's and so nice. that's why he's my butt of the week. Do you carry an umbrella, Mike? I do carry one. Wow. Absolutely. No I'm not thermos, trying to be wet. <laughs> no wallet, no phone case, but don't show up wet. Don't you dare. Mike will be like, what the fuck is wrong with you, the you bitch? fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, atmospheric river, I think, is what you were trying to <laughs> go me into could. saying. And storm parade. Storm parade. Which I thought was just a really cool way yeah. of talking about a bunch of storms lined up. Yeah, um, really cool. Also, uh, it's a uh, shoot off of Bang Bus. Great. That's a good play to bring it all home. Try it. Yep. <laughs> it's just the weather doing its old bang. But I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to go and look it up and be mad off this podcast because I truly don't know what it is. So. You will be mad. Yeah, I know I'm going to be mad. You I can will. tell I'm going to be mad. So I'm, I'm not going to be mad right now. But I'm prepping you for me to be real mad. Can't wait. Okay. Follow Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he carries an umbrella. I love that you carry an umbrella. I think anyone carrying an umbrella is a great move. Um, I had someone come over to my house the other day. They were carrying an umbrella that was so big that it, I almost laughed at it. It was I was <laughs> like, like a circus tent? Like an old timey umbrella where you're like trying to protect your fucking family under it or something. It was great. That's awesome. Umbrella game strong. Yes. Carry cool. it. Carry an umbrella. Yeah. Use protection. Yes. Great. Yes. Thank you. Um, a side note to that. I know we have to wrap up, but I had another invention for the umbrella. Yes. I don't like the middle pole because then you have to hold it in front of your face. Otherwise, proportionally, a part of you is not going to be under the umbrella. Sure. So I think that if we could make an umbrella that has almost like a crescent bend in the rod yes. and then it connects to the top, it won't be as collapsible, 
but proportional proportionately you'll be able to be underneath the entire thing mm -hmm. and it'll look cool in the silhouette because of the curvature of the rod another thing that i think you should patent if it doesn't exist and if it does exist i will give it to you for an occasion fuck yeah man <laughs> you're just giving me gift ideas mike this is awesome i love that <laughs> yes. this has been a great up i'm glad we got to uh we got fun. to debate some shit today yeah i'm glad i'm, I'm enjoying this uh, smoke and snack and hang situation with you in our new year our q1 Q1. Yeah. Follow us at Weed and Grub. Our Instagram is back. Fuck you, Meta. Um, email us. <laughs> thank at... you, Meta. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to thank them for stopping from ruining you my life. You love Renee Rizepi. Come on. You love people who are fucking, you know. I do love to... Zucks. <laughs> Um, email us wg at weedandgrub.com we are on Spotify we are on YouTube we have Seth making shorts now get at us we're trying to blow up all over every platform leave a review hit subscribe anything else? yeah catch us at SF Sketchfest on February 5th we are there at 4pm uh, ticket link in the bio we have amazing guests and it's going to be a great fucking time with some treats and fun surprises fuck yeah bye yep. everyone bye